couple of questions. First of all, thanks for coming down. Uh, it's great to have you here and to get a little bit more information on this topic. The first question I had is there's a mention in the film about natural hydraulic fracking solutions. I'm wondering if there's any research on what those are and what the cost equivalencies are between that and, say, chemical solutions that are used today. And the second question is... So wait, wait a minute. I'm just clarifying. Natural hydraulic fracking. There was a mention in the film about natural fracking solutions. I don't know what that really means. You mean like a... a Something that maybe like wouldn't be so bad. Fracturing... Oh, oh, in... The uh, fluids. Oh, did. non-toxic fracking fluids, that idea? Right. Yeah, I've heard uh, that, that, that this is perhaps possible, but there's no pressure on the industry to pursue that kind of strategy. Uh -huh. So, you know, there, it doesn't really exist. Okay. The second question is maybe a little bit more far afield as we think about what kind of energy sources we want to look at for the future for this, kind of, for this country. One of the things that strikes me is with natural gas as an example for power generation, is that this is an energy, energy source we produce and we bear the effects, both positive and negative. Where something like solar or wind or other technologies, they're manufactured overseas and, and imported. And there's huge environmental impacts for, say, mining heavy metals and all that sort of stuff that goes into those technologies. Did you come across any research or information on sort of the trade-off between natural gas in terms of the environmental effects here versus the environmental effects that we export by bringing those technologies in? The first point, though, is uh, just th this film is really specifically about the problems associated with this drilling technique. Um, and it's been really wild to go places like you know, the EPA and uh, Congress and have them ask me what the national energy plan should be. Um, <laughs> That's a bad really sign. Weird, yeah. Um, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, right? No, no, but, no, no, but, no comment on, but, no comment um, on your intelligence. What I, what, what I wanted to point out, though, is that this hydraulic fracturing is potential to sweep the globe. Um, we were working on the kind of international version of this map over the last few weeks, and it's terrifying. I mean, it's, it's, it's just poised to happen all throughout Europe, North Africa. It's already going on all over Australia, um, Bangladesh, India. Uh, it's happening in certain countries in South America already. So it's not as if we were just doing this hydraulic fracture here in America. And you know, the, the, this was a problem here. It's a problem all over the place. That's one point. Second point is that actually the Marcellus Shale, the, the biggest company that's leasing the Marcellus Shale is Chesapeake Energy. They just were bought out, um, their, the majority of their stock was bought by the state oil company of Norway. Um, so in fact, it's actually a foreign company extracting the, the gas in the United States. It's that oil in Norway. It's illegal to do hydraulic fracturing onshore in Norway. They can do it. Offshore, so in, in many ways, it's a typical situation of what the United States relationship to the developing world has turned around. That's interesting. Um, you know, as far as the problems with the solar thermal and the heavy metal mining for the wind turbines and so on, you, you kind of have to uh, look at the problem. Is we we know that 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 uh, we've got to get off of fossil fuels at some point. You know, so the renewables are the only answer to that problem in the long run, um, or even in the short run. But that doesn't stop the fact that this is a disaster unfolding all over the place. And you can't simply say, well, the other solutions are also a disaster, so we should go with this one that's disastrous. Especially right now when you have a, a, a surplus of natural gas on the international market, it's everywhere. What the T. Boone Pickens, Pickens plan is all about, yeah, he says a lot about wind, um, but it's really about natural gas. He's lobbying Congress to get natural gas put into uh, all the uh, 18 wheelers. Um, they're trying to invent new uses for natural gas right now, a new market, because the price is so low that this actually, this kind of activity is it's not sustainable. So there's this huge marketing and lobbying effort to, to make natural gas a new fuel to go into cars, um, and it, it, you know, mostly because they can get at it this new way. Um, so I know I didn't really answer the question about solar and wind. It's kind of the next movie for me, um, but this one is about the problems with this that, that are that are happening. Well, thanks again. We look forward to the next movie. Right there. So um, you didn't really uh, say anything at all about the time, the way in which natural gas had been extracted, the way in which natural gas had been extracted before this technique had been developed very recently, and 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 what the differences are. I assume that they're pretty extreme. I mean, could, could you just uh, traditional, the, yeah, the traditional natural gas 
drilling is into domes or anticlines where you have pockets of natural gas that are trapped in these like rock, underground rock domes. They're not just like about breaking apart this shale formation. So when you tap into those, the gas kind of just comes out because it's lighter than air. Um, and so natural gas is also a byproduct of oil drilling. It's uh, in the oil wells and in a lot of places they actually just vent it off because they want to get the oil without the gas. Um, much, much less problematic. This is the boom that's happening now, so it's principally what, what we're here to address. Hi, thank you so much for coming sure. today. Um, your movie was really depressing in a lot of ways because I study coal and I study alternatives to coal and looking at different options and natural gas is often held up as the transition fuel getting right. away from mountain top removal and other extractive forms of energy. And I just had a question based on my experience working in the coal fields. The, the folks that you interviewed, one family gave reference to the fact that they did not own the mineral rights to their land. So I'm assuming they did not sign a lease or concede the drilling, but somebody bought the mineral rights. Is that right? I don't really focus a happening? lot on this in this film because, in my mind, it's kind of irrelevant. And most of the West is something called split estate. This is also true in Arkansas. Um, and the, there are the mineral rights and the surface rights are split. So somebody else can own the mineral rights. And in, in, in the East, that's not really the case. Like in Pennsylvania or New York, if you own the surface, most likely you own the minerals too. Um, but out there, you've had extractive energy companies buying those mineral rights for 100 years. So you have some people you know, out in Colorado or Wyoming that Chevron owns their mineral rights, they've owned them for 100 years, and all of a sudden one day they just show up on these people's doorsteps and say, we're gonna put our well over here, we're gonna put our man camp over there, and there's nothing they can do about it, and they get no revenue from it whatsoever. But in many cases, you know, some people own, will, will own a percentage of their mineral rights. But for example, if all the people around me have leased something like 60% of the people around me at least, I get forced pooled um, in Pennsylvania. So then they come up on my door and they say, well, you've got to sign this or else you don't get any money. And if you don't sign it, we're going to just take the gas from under you anyway. And there's a lot of this kind of strong arming that's going on. Um, and and the, the land, one of the things that I don't fo focus on in the film, which is, which is really amazing, is when the landmen come to your door, they just lie. They just say, this is not going to be a problem, it's just going to be a fire hydrant in the middle of the field. You know, I didn't have any experience with those people personally, so I didn't really go into it, but they just basically lie. Um, and they'll say, your neighbors have signed, you better sign now. And some people sign for $25, some of the people in Dimmick sign for $25 an acre. You know, so for me, the whole issue of the, whether or not people made money, this film is really about the unfolding health catastrophe and water and air problems. So it's, it was just one too many things to go into. We could have had a six hour movie. And actually, I guess I was asking because I'm wondering if there's any legal repercussion. Or do they have any options to sue for nuisance? Or is there any sure. Legal approach with yeah. That? And the problem with, you know, there are class action suits and there's things that have been happening. Um, it's one lawyer against 400 a lot of the time. And then what happens is people just get bought off. I mean, the biggest suits, not to be overly depressing about this, um, the, some of the bigger class action suits, the, the companies will come in and pick off the worst cases and p pay them off often with a non-disclosure agreement. Um, but I, I, what's happening on Western Pennsylvania is that I just heard that there's this one town which traded, 200 different people traded non-disclosure agreements for two years worth of replacement of water. So, I mean, this, some, uh, one of Al Appleton, who's in the film, um, who's this former New York City DEP commissioner, was saying that that should be extortion. Because you should be able to trade silence for a basic uh, human right. Um, you know, so, so this is what I, you know, going out into the world to do this, uh, just to, to investigate it, figure out what uh, was really happening, was an unbelievably alarming process of how much deception there is involved in the process. Um, you know, every day I hear another, a new story of how this has just, you know, these huge energy corporations just decide what's true and say that. Um, and I mean, it's just, it's bold-faced, it's, it's quite a